Hi everyone, here's what's bothering me today. Today I'd actually like to tell you a bit of a story. It's the story of Nora. Um, Nora was the first Nazi concentration camp. It was in the German state of Thuringia and it originally started to detain communist uh, rebels and insurgents or alleged communists and insurgents in that city. Um, they basically detained them in what was kind of like a mix of military barracks at slash boarding school. And the prisoners originally did not work. They were just there and guarded by other staff and students. This was in 1933. Um, and it is widely considered to be the first concentration camp. Now, again, a concentration camp does not automatically mean a death camp. And the reason why I bring up Nora is because I wanted to point out to people that atrocities never start with mass graves. It always starts with the othering of some kind of threat. Now, Nora was the first, but as we know, it would certainly not be the only one, and there were many more. The second one I want to talk about is one that happened in uh, the Czech Republic uh, called Theresien or Theresienstadt in German. And this became a camp for elderly Jews after the Nazis had fully occupied the remaining rump of Czechoslovakia. And this was a front of a camp. This is where they put a lot of elderly Jews and the Nazis said that it was basically like a spa. It was, it was a nice place for elderly Jews to retire and live out their golden years. It's not a work camp or anything like that. And so lots of people, lots of Jews would uh, eventually be sent by train to this camp where they'd stay for a little while before then being shipped out to other more sinister work camps, which we are all more familiar with. And the reason why I bring these up is because of a story that broke, I think yesterday or perhaps the day before, of a whistleblower, a nurse at an ICE detention facility. And she blew the whistle on the fact that these people were not getting medical help medical records were being shredded or falsified and COVID was a huge risk and most damning and horrifying of all they were forcing a lot of the women to get hysterectomies and for those who don't know a hysterectomy is an operation that removes part or all of the uterus according to the UN this is a form of genocide now I again bring this up because let's think of how the detention facilities have been a started and b expanded and to horrifying levels. So a lot of people except maybe a handful of Republicans who love to use this point, a lot of people won't know that the first sort of border detention camps and the use of metering which forces people to stay on the Mexican side of the border for weeks or months at a time before the applications are processed. This was started by Bill Clinton and then eventually expanded upon by Barack Obama. So you'll sometimes hear Republicans say, oh, see, this was the Democrats. So yeah, it's actually the Democrats' fault. Now, this is only partially true. The problem is how the camps expanded and how they started operating. So according to international law that the Americans themselves have signed, you have the right to cross into another country and claim asylum if that is your plan. Like you are fleeing persecution, death, terrible events. If you are a refugee, you are allowed to claim asylum, whether you enter the country legally or not. You just have to report it somewhere. This is considered an international legal right. So what America has done under the Trump administration is basically say, well, 
Um, no, they're actually breaking a law by crossing illegally. They aren't, but this is what they're claiming. And so they're detaining these people without right to trial or anything like that. And by having to suddenly say, oh, well, we have so many detainees, we have to open new camps. So the first camp, NORA, again, I said it was just, you know, initially a boarding school, but then numerous other camps started to show up. The Theresienstadt one that I mentioned, that was also basically a converted military barracks initially. And this is what we've seen where numerous facilities have been expanded or converted into detention centers along the U.S. southern border. And the justification is that it's, it's necessary to secure the state. You know, you have to turn these people into some kind of villain. You need to dehumanize them. That's why they talk about caravans hordes, invasions. They're coming to commit unspeakable crimes on your lovely women. This is always how it starts, whether it's for foreigners, whether it's for internal enemies. Just stop and think about it. Who else has the Trump administration gone after? The Democrats, they're evil. They're obfuscating all the lovely things we'd like to do to make America great again. This invasion from our southern border. They're bringing drugs, crime, and rapists into our good, wholesome country. Antifa, you know, they're, they're, gonna, they're starting wildfires and they want to take your belongings in Idaho and Oregon and all these different places. It never starts with an external enemy. It always starts with an internal enemy, followed by a threat from something from the outside. And they always make it so that it has to be a dehumanizing experience. Because if they can get you to dehumanize another human, whatever they do to that human won't matter. And this is why you see several Republicans and Trump supporters say, well, look, we're giving them good, adequate care. It's better than what they had in Mexico or El Salvador or Honduras or Guatemala or wherever. And... If this doesn't horrify you and you think it has anything to do with legalism of, well, they came here illegally, I again remind you, that is not a crime. What is a crime is how these people are being treated in these camps when they're asking for medical help and it's being ignored or at worst shredded. When, oh, hey, we have a bit of a COVID outbreak and it becomes immediately hush-hush, that's a problem. When children are dying and being sexually abused at the hands of American officials, that's a problem. When women are being forced to have hysterectomies, that is a problem. It is a form of genocide, and it is happening in the United States of America today. America is already at the point of having concentration camps for its terrible amount of foreign enemies. And it also has now random federal agents roving the streets in unmarked cars, arbitrarily detaining people and taking them to what amount to black sites. America right now is in mid-1930s Weimar Germany. That is where you guys are right now. You have concentration camps. You have federal agents arresting people into the night. You have a leader who is already making noise about not stepping down or conceding an election loss. And you also have this leader othering lots of people within your own country and setting loose these federal agents to arbitrarily detain people. These concentration camps and detention centers on the U.S. border, these are the start. It gets worse from here unless you toss this guy. And the fact that a lot of people don't realize that is what's bothering me today.